Well, today I want to talk about um, a little tool I started hacking together on my train right here. Classic for lightning talk. I call it Licensal, and it's basically um, a command line tool for collecting dependency licenses from a project. So uh, some facts about um, licenses, especially open source licenses and open source. There's a nice uh, quote by the Free Software Foundation. They're saying, free software is a matter of liberty, not price. To understand the concept, you should think of free as in free speech, not as in free beer. Really like that one. Um, <coughs> There are uh, different open source software license types, and I called it the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, some of you might agree. So we all know MIT license, Apache license, the BSD licenses, and probably some of, of you guys know the Zlib license. Um, there are, those are really, I say, the good licenses because they're very permissive. There is no copyleft effect, so you can just go ahead and use it and do basically everything you want. And then there are the bad, it's the Mozilla um, license, it's LGPL, and well, the not so permissive licenses, it's the general public um, license, um, and it's, well, some derivatives of it. Mm. When we look at the usage last year, you can see that um, it's, it's pretty much dominated by um, the, the very permissive licenses, so a, a lot of MIT and Apache stuff is going on, which I think is a good thing, so um, the developer community has a lot of options how to use frameworks and libraries and that stuff. Um, the bitter truth, and this is why I came up with that whole thing, we're all using licensed libraries and frameworks, but uh, basically we never look at the licenses. So we are just doing Composer Require, npm install save, and then we just go ahead and code our stuff and use whatever we want. and. Um, I think the vast majority never had a look at really what license we are using. The thing is, we not only should care, we have to. Because I had a look at the German Simmel code and, well, he's not my best friend, but a friend of mine is a lawyer and I talked to him. And um, it says, the contractor um, shall provide the purchaser with the work free of material defects and defects of title. So if uh, we care about the last statement, defects of title, it means that we really have to include the licenses in our deliverables. Um, when we look at the website, um, there are some discussions going on if um, it's already a deliverable because you know, your, your browser downloads it and then you have it on your machine in some way, but there are some discussions going on. It's more obvious if you're shipping like a mobile application because really users download that from, from a store like Google Play or um, something like that. So it's really deliverable. And then you really, you're obligated um, to list all the licenses. And um, I had a look at some applications we, we probably all know. Instagram, Todoist, that's my favorite to-do tool. And WhatsApp, somewhere hidden in the legal texts or in the info sections, there's always um, a section with used software or open source licenses. And um, if you look at those pages, it's a lot of scrolling. It's a lot of scrolling, a lot of text. Nobody reads it. So it's typical legal stuff. And um, at a project we are working on right now, a guy from the legal department of the customer called me and said, hey, Julian, um, where are, the, where are the, the license texts? And I was like, uh, go on GitHub, check them out. And he was, no, 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 we have to include them in, in the, in the uh, application. And when I, I found that section in the, in the German civil code, I was like, yeah, okay, we probably really have to do it. And it's just a pain in the ass. Um, going to all the repositories, uh, copying the license text, putting it to a file. It's a lot of copy-paste work. And, well, I was just reluctant to do that. So I thought it'll be cool to have a small command line tool to just grab all your dependencies, read the licenses, and generate a static file out of that. This is basically uh, what a license uh, does. So it's, it's really early stage, so it's just some 200 lines of code. I just want to show you what it, what it does. Um, so give me a second. OK, I can just say on the command line, license. Um, you can see there are then a lot, lot, lot of, lot of um, options. I'm just going to run it. Um, the info flag and the generate flag. So what it does, um, it scans my package JSON file. It found uh, 69 dependency, and now it scans node modules. What it does first is it tries to grab the physical license files if they are shipped with the uh, um, 
um, the snapshots of the repository. And if they're not there, it tries to determine the repository URL and tries to grab the license file from the GitHub repositories. So um, tool is done. And what does it say? Um, there are two different license types found, MIT and Apache uh, 2.0. That is a good thing. So just very permissive non-copyleft licenses. Um, it found uh, 35 license files locally and it downloaded a 30 license file from, from GitHub. So we have four failures. It can be different reasons. Probably there isn't a license file in the repository. I thought about um, maybe writing a markdown parser that just tries to grab the license section from the readme file. You all know that it's most of the time at the, at the bottom of the file. Um, but it did a lot of work. Um, here's a list of all the MIT licenses. Um, as you can see, it's just an um, Ionic um, hybrid app, some Apache licenses. Okay, and at the end it said creating license file, and it asks us if it should output it or show it in a, in a browser. So at this point, some of you guys might think, okay, there are already tools out there which are doing exactly that, and, um, well, you're kind of right, but uh, I didn't found, um, didn't find any that is really generating that static file that I can just use and put to my project. So let's have a look. So this is what the tool generated. It's just one simple HTML file and it lists all the licenses. So it really puts it together in one single file. And um, I just took it and put it in my application. And um, I thought I had the emulator somewhere here. Give me a second for just showing it how it looks inside the application. Okay, here we go. Um, it's that application. It's just a local um, event provider. <laughs> and if you uh, have a look at the licenses, Oh no, that's, that's data privacy licenses. It just looks like um, that. So it's it's basically the same thing we just seen in uh, my slides, what everybody is doing. And um, thing is, I just really don't want to worry about that too much. So it's it's good to have a tool that just generates it for you and put it there, because the lawyer friend of mine says if you do that, you're, you're really fine. Um, he said, you, you, you're part of the top tier if you um, care at all, because most people just, just um, don't. Okay. Um, I wasn't sure if I should already publish it because it's so early stage, but I thought, fuck it. So if you want to have a look, um, <laughs> just put it to NPM yesterday. And yeah, just you can give it a try. I um, intend to extend it a little bit so it that it doesn't only scan the package JSON, but also the composer JSON, so that you can use it for your Silver Stripe projects. I'll probably play around with that uh, next week. Um, some more information about um, licenses and stuff like that, because I spent some time researching it. There's a cool tool uh, call called, well, cool isn't the right term. Um, it's still about licenses. <laughs> it's called uh, Fosology. It's a license browser. You can just put it to a Docker con uh, container or to, to a Vagrant box and try it out. So this is really a good one if you care about that kind of stuff. Um, there's a cool project um, initiated by GitHub called Choose a License that just helps you picking the right license for your project. Plus, I had an interesting chat uh, with Sam yesterday about the Silverstripe license because I had a look at the repository and I've noticed Silverstripe is under BSD Clause 3. And I was really surprised that it's Clause 3, not Clause 2, because um, the, the third clause says, neither the name of Silverstripe CMS nor the names of its contributors may be used to endorse or promote products derived from this software without specific prior written permission. That means that we are legally not allowed to market our products and say, hey, we build that with Silver Stripe, actually, from a legal perspective. So um, I don't know what you think about it today. Um, <laughs> it would be good to have a statement, actually. <laughs> Here we go. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have to look into it. I mean, I think there's two, I mean, 
my interpretation of endorse and promote is to say more like, oh, Silverstripe recommends this because we, we built it in, which would be kind of different. Um, acknowledging that Silverstripe was used to create it, I guess I don't interpret that statement as as blocking that. Okay. Um, and certainly, I you know fully welcome anyone to to, <laughs> to um, say that they used Silverstripe CMS to build things. Like that's great. Everybody um, heard that. Okay. Yeah. We're yeah, fine. Yeah. So. No, we're we're fine. Um, <laughs> we we do have like branding guidelines um, on on the website which say look these are all the ways you can and and can't use the names and that mm. that would definitely supersede this um mm. in the sense that um um you know this says well don't do anything without prior written permission that subsequent document is essentially prior written permission so um yeah yeah that that has a lot of a lot, a lot of detail as well as more i guess general kind of branding guidelines like these are the official colors and fonts and, and all of that so if you're wondering what to do, what you can and can't do with that, the names, I would probably suggest looking at that document rather than the BSD license. Okay. And if you're still confused, just get in touch. <laughs> All right. All so right. Hopefully, does that sort of clear it up for anyone who <laughs> cares about okay. licenses this much? Thanks a lot. Yeah. That's basically what I wanted to hear. <laughs> um, it's, we could probably make specific reference to that clause in, in the the guidelines documents to say there's this clause this is how we interpret that that might might be a good way of tying it up because i hadn't really thought about it that much until you mentioned it well that's the thing about licenses <laughs> nobody does that's that's really the gist yeah okay well that was it thanks a lot okay.